Hello and welcome fellow KringleCon attendees. My name is Chris Elgy. I work for Counterhack Challenges and have the distinct pleasure of being one of Santa's helpers when it comes to the Sands Holiday Hack Challenge and KringleCon generally. So I'm super excited to be here again and happy to talk to you today about locks. This is something that's a little less uh, ones and zeros, a little less digital than, than maybe we, we tend to think about in penetration testing and in cybersecurity more generally, but Things like physical, simple physical locks often protect some of our most valuable assets, such as keys to server rooms, and uh, or maybe just maybe just locks on important doors. So I wanted to take a look at a couple physical locks, and and certainly there are ways around you know different different padlocks and things like that, and you may you may uh, see some of that uh, here this this month. But uh, I want to talk more about the the rotary cipher combination locks that we that we see sometimes in our in our penetration testing. So for example. We have uh, my my somewhat expensive carry-on with, with my hacker stickers on it, and uh, and it has traveled the world and will continue to do so. Uh, and then we also have my wife's uh, less expensive luggage that that's more likely to go to uh, Orlando than than Riyadh. Uh, also magically translucent here with a bit of holiday magic. So so we're gonna look at both of these locks and just talk about how they might be defeated in a penetration testing type scenario. So let's go ahead and look first at uh, my wife's luggage here. And uh, sorry, honey, for showing the world how to break in your luggage. All right. So so we have here uh, these these three tumblers, right? We got these three rotors showing eight, six and zero right now. We also have a lock here, a TSA lock. Um, yes, if you have uh, the means, <laughs> you may be able to find or create a key that fits that lock, but that's a different talk. Uh, we're gonna talk about setting the right numbers here on these three dials and then pushing this button here on the end that releases the zippers and allows somebody access to the badge. So, uh, so certainly we could try all 1000 combinations and then somewhere in there, find the right combination uh, that opens the luggage. But but we're gonna just do it a little uh, more simply here. I'm gonna try to get you a good shot of the luggage there. All right, so it turns out the way this works is there are these, these notches and you can just see them there under the dials we were looking at before, right? So here, there's a little notch on the left edge of that tumbler. That's a little better. And then uh, there's not a notch under here or under, oh, there's one here. And what I'm gonna do is make the notches all line up. So th the idea with this lock is that these notches, when positioned correctly, will uh, will allow the, the, the button to open the, the zippers, right? So we get these three notches and when they're in the right position within the lock, the button on the end will allow them to release. So, um, so there they are. Now, just having the notches face us probably doesn't get us in, right? If there's some job they need to do inside the lock, then we probably need to position them a different way. But we're going to use this as a starting combination. And then we're going to get there within nine tries. So I'll push the button now. It doesn't work. And then I'm, I'm going to rotate them all once. So let's go to 631. Button doesn't go. Let's go to 520. Button doesn't go. Let's go to 41 nine and it goes. So uh, so that's it. I, I got the notches to line up. I then turned them all together one at a time and found where they needed to sit in a lock to get through. And that's that's pretty cool, right? That's that's a relatively easy way to get into a piece of luggage. Now, surely it must be harder with my expensive luggage here, right? This is this was uh, I don't know, at least, at least twice as expensive, maybe more than my wife's. So certainly it's more secure, right? And the answer is uh, no. <laughs> uh, sorry to spoil it. So uh, so we, we can do the same kind of thing here, right? If, we, if I spin this to eight, and if you look really closely, there's a little notch you can see right, right on one side of, the, uh, of the, the rotor there. And we can do that with each of these. And, and find these little notches and then spin them all together like we just did with the other lock. And eventually we're gonna find a position where it opens up. But in preparing for this talk, I found something out where if I just put some pressure on this button and not, not too much, not too little, just some pressure on this open button, it's a slider here, uh, and then start spinning the numbers, the numbers get stuck. So it's, it's hard to show you what it feels like, but uh, 
as I'm going here, they're kind of rolling through. It's a little chunky, and then it really kind of drops into position when I get on the right, get on the right number there. And it's hard to get out of the number, so I'll keep spinning this one. It's like a little hard to turn. Oh, and there we go. If you heard that sound, that meant that our zippers have released. So, uh, so again, I just put some pressure on the button, not too much, not too little, and spun those those uh, tumblers till they kind of kind of stopped wanting to move. And, uh, and that was the magic trick. So if at some point during uh, your adventure here in, uh, in this lovely climate, you find a lock that looks like one of these, go ahead and try these techniques, right? Maybe try putting some pressure on that open button. Not too much, but put some pressure on it. Spin those tumblers and see where they tend to stick. And then push that button all the way and just see if it opens for you. It might, might help you out. All right, thanks so much for attending. Uh, we, we love having you all here. And I hope you have a great time and learn some cool things. Thanks.